Hey gamers, it's Grind This Game here, and this is going to be a short, uh, short guide on uh, how to raise hatches and all the different hatch variants and, and whatnot. So I'll try to keep it short. Um, some of my guides do get a little bit long, but so first thing, why would you ever want to uh, raise hatches? Uh, they're they're a great source of coal. Um, they can also be a source of uh, metal if you raise some of the smooth hatches. So I'll just kind of go over the basics, the requirements, and then the four different variants, which are smooth hatch, stone hatch, regular hatch, and the sage hatch. Uh, so to get these guys going, first of all, you're going to find them as you dig out your base uh, early on. You're going to find them in rocks and stuff, and they'll pop out. And they'll be in their wild state. And later on, when you groom them, they turn into a, a tame state, and they'll, st they'll stay in the tame state, and all their babies will be tamed from there on out. And there's advantage to having tame ones versus wild ones, and I'll, I'll mention that later. So, the requirements. Um, in order to make a, a ranch, we'll just check out the room overlay in the top right here. Or, sorry, a stable. The room is actually called a stable. I call it a ranch, but whatever. Uh, it has a minimum tile size of 12 and a maximum size of 96. And these this room here is 96, 4 by 24. Um, it also needs a grooming station, which is this thing here. And then to actually use these things, you need a, a, a job, uh, the ranching job, which is down here. So there's a, uh, it's right here, but you need a requirement of a farmhand. So you'll train a farmhand up first, and then you can assign them to ranching here. And that gives them the critter wrangling trait, which allows you to capture them, and then the grooming trait which is uh, how you turn a wild hatch into a tame hatch. So I'll just, if you click, if you actually click on the uh, hatch and you click this little entry in the database, you get quite a bit of interesting information about them. So you can see their comfort range, you can see what they eat. Uh, so regular hatches eat um, sand, sandstone, and all this other th stuff here. They can also eat food. But I highly, I highly recommend you don't eat them, uh, don't let them eat food because it's kind of a waste. And then there's the four variants. We got the sage hatch, and I'll go into more detail about these later, and what they eat. And then also the stone hatch, and then finally down here is the smooth hatch. So you can also get a lot of information if you actually click on a hatch. And in this uh, status here, if you hover over a lot of these things, you can get some really good information. So reproduction rate, um, this will count up from 0% to 100% and then they'll lay an egg. And you can affect how fast they reproduce uh, by giving them lots of space in their ranch. Uh, you can also groom them. They also live to 100 cycles. Uh, what else do we got here? Calories body temperature and then critically down here you've got the egg chances so you'll probably start off your map will just have regular hatches but depending on what you feed them you can push them encourage them to uh, lay a different type of egg so the regular hatch here if you feed them you can see he has a 31 percent chance of uh, he or she making an egg and then a five percent chance of making a stone hatchling egg but you can increase that probability by feeding them sedimentary rock. So it's kind of a key way of getting them to, getting them to morph into a different kind of hatch. And then finally down here, sage hatchling egg, 64%. Uh, that increases the more you feed them dirt. So if we click on a different one here, we can see 60%. So it, it, it varies based on the hatch and how much dirt you fed it. So in this ranch here, you also, in, in addition to the grooming station, you'll need a critter feeder. And here you can select which critter you want, and then also what what you're going to feed them. So this one right here I have selected, I'm feeding regular hatches and hatchlings, which are the babies of the hatches. I'm feeding them only dirt. Because in this room I want to encur encourage them to become sage hatches, which are these green eggs which eventually turn into these guys here, sage hatchings. So to actually capture them, you need to wrangle them. 
And once you have the ranching skill, if you click on a hatch and you click a wrangle, we can just see here what that's going to be like. I'll set it to priority 9 so they come do it right away. It basically puts them in a little bag. There we go. Well, first it puts them upside down. And then, depending on where you want to put them, they'll come along, put them in a little bag, and drop them off. Now, the other thing you need in your in your stable or ranch is a critter drop-off point. So, down here I have... This is where I'm putting all my overflow right on my hatches. So, I have them set to 20. So, they'll put up to 20 hatches in here, and you can pick which kind of hatches they put in here. So, I have it set to regular hatches and hatch babies, hatchlings. But up here, I have it set to auto wrangle surplus, set at six. So if the population here goes over six, they'll run in here and they'll they'll capture a hatch and they'll bring them down to this room. So it's a good way of managing, you know, how many hatches you want. The reason I have this set to six is right now they're cramped, which is reducing their reproduction rate. So eventually they'll move them all down into this room and in, in this room I'll probably just, uh, kill them off. Turn them into barbecue. You can attack them and they'll turn into meat, which you can turn into barbecue later on. So I'll talk about the four different variants briefly here. So regular hatch, like I said, if you hover over their food here, diet, digestion, you can see all the things they eat. And then if you hover over excretion, you can see coal. So 50% of consumed mass. So the regular hatches They'll get rid of your your kind of things like sandstone, clay, uh, sedimentary rock, uh, which you'll have a lot of. Like the, the asteroid has a lot of sandstone. Right here I've got 200 tons. It's got lots of sedimentary rock. So this is, I usually feed them sedimentary rock though because I like to get stone hatches. And I'll show you the other hatch farms I have over here. This is more of like a more advanced hatch farm. And I'll explain what I've done in here, but these stone hatches, uh, they also they eat their diet's a little bit more limited. They'll eat kind of rocky things, and I prefer most of my hatches to be of this variety because they're going to eat uh, a lot of igneous rock, which is really plentiful on the map. They'll also eat obsidian and granite and sedimentary rock. And then uh, there's the sage hatchings, which I'll just show you here. Like I said, if you feed a regular hatch, lots of dirt will eventually lay a hatch egg, a sage hatching egg, and you'll get these guys. I don't like these guys as much because the things you can feed them are much more limited. You can feed them dirt, which I I find to be a waste because you can dirt use dirt for growing food later on. You can feed them slime, but you can also just turn slime into algae. And algae is good for making oxygen, so I don't really do like that. You can feed them fertilizer. Also, don't like doing that. I like to use fertilizer for plants. You can feed them polluted dirt, but it's pretty easy to turn polluted dirt just into regular dirt using a compost. So I don't find them that valuable. The only kind of good thing about them is that if you hover over excretion here, coal, 100% of what they eat is turned into coal, whereas with the regular hatch, uh, only 50% of what they eat is turned into coal. So I guess if you have lots of lots of extra dirt or polluted dirt and you want to get rid of it, it might be worthwhile to have a few sage hatches. So what else do I want to talk about here? Uh, smooth hatchlings. This is the other variant. Now you can't get a smooth hatch directly from a regular hatch. If you click on a regular hatch here, you'll see uh, they have a t high chance, or they have a chance of making a hatchling egg, stone hatchling, or sage hatchling, but they can't make a smooth hatchling directly. So you have to first get some stone hatchlings or sage hatchlings, and then from there you can turn them into a smooth hatchling. And you encourage them to make smooth hatchling eggs by feeding them uh, raw ore, like copper ore, gold amalgam, iron ore, or wolframite. Now I don't recommend you feed them wolframite or copper ore um, because those are kind of precious and there's only so much of it. Uh, iron ore is a little bit more plentiful and gold amalgam can be plentiful depending on how much you've explored on your map. Now the advantage to these guys or girls 
or hermaphrodites. I'm not really sure what they are. They, they're able to make eggs without having sex. Anyway, that's a, <laughs> that's a different topic. Um, smooth hatchlings, they'll turn your raw ore and they'll poop out um, refined metal. So if they eat copper ore, they're gonna poop out copper. Uh, same thing here, gold amalgam, they'll uh, uh, poop out refined gold. And they're gonna do it at 75% of the mass. So if you feed them 100 kilograms of gold amalgam, you're gonna get 75 kilograms of gold. Now I'm pretty far into this base, so the saving is a little bit laggy here, but. Okay, so early game, um, smooth hatches are a pretty good way to get refined metals without generating a bunch of heat. I actually prefer using the metal refinery or using the rock granulator um, to crush uh, iron into iron ore. Now you, you lose 50% of it, but it's I find it a much easier way to get metal. But some people like to use smooth hatches instead and they're fun, they're fun to wrench. Uh, what else could I mention here? Uh, hatches can jump up over two tiles. So a lot of my hatches right here, if I left these doors open and the dupes came in and out, a lot of them are escaping. So you may want to put your door and your ladder on top to get into their their pens. That way they won't they won't get out this door. And I'll try to explain what I've got going on here. This is more an advanced hatch farm, but and they might fix this, but for now, when a hatch poops out uh, coal or lays an egg, it actually drops through these pneumatic doors and will fall down here into this little water pit that I have here. So you can take that, uh, take advantage of that, but you need to put these buildings on something and you can't put them directly on pneumatic doors, mesh doors. So I've put some uh, mechanized airlocks here to put all this equipment on. And then I open them periodically using a, uh, this time schedule automation, which is hooked up into the doors. So for a short period of time during this during the day, these will open. Any coal, like right here, this coal will the doors will open and it'll fall down and fall down into the water. And now I have some auto sweepers here, which will pick up um, pick up the coal. They'll also pick up any meat that that is in here, and they deliver it to this little container here, and then I kind of sort it out into different containers over here. Now the reason I have water down here, two tiles worth of water, is that these eggs, they'll incubate on their own. Uh, let's just click on one here. You can see incubation 90%. So when it hits 100%, uh, a little stone hatch will, a baby stone hatch will hatch out of here and he'll drown in the water. And when he dies, he'll turn into uh, meat, and then the auto sweeper will pick up the meat and send it off. So it's a good way of farming meat that's a little bit more automated. I just love watching these guys. Um, what else can I say about them? Oh, the incubator. I didn't really talk about that. So eggs will incubate on their own at fi at a rate of uh, five percent. If you click on this egg, you can see and hover over incubation five percent per cycle. But if you put them in an incubator, the dupes will come along and hug the incubator and it'll cause the incubation rate to go up. So if I hover over incubation here, we can see we got the base rate of 5%, but we also get an extra 20% from being lullabied. So the dupe will come along, say them a little lullaby. And that's a way of getting eggs faster. They do take power. They take 240 watts of power. And there's a little indicator here that shows how you know, what percentage, once this green is fully filled in. Oh, like this guy here. Incubation 100%. This one's about to hatch. Oh, I caught it on camera. I didn't, I didn't plan on doing that, but then they'll come in, they'll, they'll take the baby out and allow them to run around. I think I covered kind of what I wanted to cover here. Um... Just checking my notes here. So I covered the feeder, the grooming station, the incubator, the drop-off. Like I said, you can keep them as in their wild state, but
but they won't uh, produce as much coal. But once they're tamed, they'll be tamed forever. Any babies that they have will be tamed. They can also... Oh, there's there's a bunch of states they can be in, like cramped. I mentioned earlier. It, re it reduces the reproduction rate by 100%. And to prevent that, you, you just you'll try to keep the egg count or the critter count down. But there's also the glum state which reduces their metabolism. And that just happens when they haven't been groomed in in uh, recently. You can also see the reproduction rate and their happiness. So there's a lot of information in this tab when you hover over stuff. It's kind of hidden away. Anyway, I think that's uh, all I wanted to say in this guide. Let me know if I missed anything. Oh, there is the Critter Sensor. I'll briefly talk about that. It's a new thing they added recently. Uh, it just sends an automation signal, whether depending on the count. And this can allow you to control uh, like whether you activate an incubator or not, depending on the count of critters in the room. So it's pretty handy. But I think that's all I wanted to talk about. Uh, I'm gonna have another guide. I was gonna put all the critter guides together into one, but there's no way I can do it. So I'm gonna have a Dreco guide. I'm probably gonna have a Puffed guide. And some of the other, sh maybe a Shine Bug guide. Just to talk about how you can ranch them. One thing I'll m mention briefly is that this critter room, it's 4x24 like I said, but some people build vertical or, or kind of different shaped critter rooms that may work a little bit better. I just stick with the standard size, but you might want to make it uh, kind of tall and not very wide, but that's up to you. I love the animation here. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed this guide. I hope you found it useful. If you, if I've missed anything or got any suggestions, please leave it in the comment. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.